The University of Exeter sponsors this session as part of our celebration of 20 years of the Experimental Archaeology Masters programme. Feeling inspired? Do get in touch. Many of our staff research and teach using experiments. We encourage our students to present and publish. At this conference, eight staff, five current PhD students and ten current and recent master's students are all presenting papers. They're doing this alongside many of our former students who have continued to conduct their research in this field. The conference has proved to be a great way to see more of our global alumni. If you want to come and study with us for an MSc in Experimental Archaeology or any of our top postgraduate programmes, do get in touch. We also offer research degrees at Masters and PhD level, which can be based in Exeter or at a distance. You will be joining a vibrant and active postgraduate community and become part of a world-leading research department. Hello, I'm Naomi Sykes. I'm a professor in archaeology at the University of Exeter and I'm also co-director of the Centre for Humane Bioarchaeology. What does the Centre for Humane Bioarchaeology stand for? Well, it is the Centre for Human-Animal-Environment Interactions. And in our centre, what we do is we study these interactions around the world throughout time over the last 10,000 years to reconstruct how people have interacted with the natural world. And we use this data, these millennia of data that we have at our fingertips to, to reconstruct and, and then mitigate present day global challenges. So things such as food security and biodiversity, we can understand how these things developed. And then what we do is we use experimental archaeology to communicate our findings to the public. So to give you an example, we've been working on fallow deer. It's a species of deer that's native to uh, Anatolia, has been translocated around the world, but was brought to Britain um, in around 1000 AD. And it was brought to Britain as a supply of venison. And it was so intensively managed that people at the time and the medieval elite hunted to extinction quite a lot of the top predators in order to preserve venison for human consumption. They hunted out all the top predators and then the fashion for hunting fell out of fashion. So now fallow deer are, are very populous on the island and their, their numbers are increasing and increasing, actually causing some damage to biodiversity. So what we've been doing is uh, working with schools and NGOs and taking complete carcasses of fallow deer into schools, working with, with children, working with members of the public to use medieval hunting rituals, reconstruct the way in which deer were ritually butchered um, to educate people about how this situation has arisen using these kind of experimental archeology span techniques, getting people involved so that we can get venison back into the human food chain because at the moment it, it really isn't quite a lot of fallow deer venison is exported to the continent if you want to buy venison you'll actually find that it's imported from New Zealand so what we're doing is this experimental approach to get people hands dirty in terms of deer butchery so they can understand the situation that we've we come to and start getting venison, which is sustainable, free range meats back into the human food chain, whilst also controlling a population of deer that's otherwise going unchecked. So this is how we've been using experimental archaeology uh, to communicate our results. Hello, my name is Professor Linda Herkin, and I am the director of our Masters of Science in Experimental Archaeology. I'm also the person who set it up just over 20 years ago now. So this section is really just saying happy birthday to experimental archaeology at Exeter. I wanted to just go over some of the reasons why we set up that master's programme. I've always felt that academic research has a great value but so does practical research and knowledge that you can gain through your hands and doing something reinforces an understanding and gives you insights into the things that you see in the archaeological record. So in all kinds of ways the original idea for the Masters was to put together two bodies of knowledge and make that available to students. Over the years the course has grown, expanded and it's now a Masters in Science although it started as a Masters in Arts and as we've gone through there are students from all over the globe. 
and they've come, they've learned something from us and they've gone back. And for me as a lecturer, it's incredibly rewarding to see just what value that whole experience has given people. There are experienced craftspeople who've come who wanted to just get an academic dimension to their practical craft and to find a way to publish in their field. And there are also people who were academically very successful but who wanted to do something that meant that they could practically engage with the material that they've been studying. That's a real feature of experimental archaeology and as we put it together here at Exeter. A lot of choice, the chance to get involved with staff research projects, but also to do your own thing and to take it where you want. It's a feature that I think has really paid dividends over the years. And to see what some of our alumni are doing now and to research a little bit about what they've gone on to do has been a great way of celebrating 20 years of experimental archaeology here at Exeter. So, happy birthday experimental archaeology! Hello, I'm Hanaka Herold. I am an early medieval archaeologist uh, and I also do research on uh, pottery, both in uh, a scientific way uh, and uh, with experimental methods. Uh, I have mainly used uh, experimental methods uh, in my research uh, to look into past economies, uh, the production of pottery uh, in uh, various uh, settings uh, from a local production uh, to uh, workshop production. In addition to that, uh, in my research I have recently started uh, a new area uh, which also includes experiments and in this uh, I have a cooperation with Sue Heeser who is among other things a glass beads uh, specialist. Uh, we are looking into early medieval uh, glass beads that were most likely uh, produced uh, in the Middle East and were uh, imported in Europe and the way how these uh, the degree of difficulty uh, that it takes uh, to produce uh, these glass beads is what uh, Sue's research uh, can help me uh, uh, decipher. Uh, and on the whole, the value and, uh, of experimental archaeology to me, both in research and teaching, uh, is to, to have a reality check on uh, any kind of uh, theories, any kind of uh, conclusions uh, that we often draw uh, nest next to a desk uh, without thinking uh, of uh, practical aspects and these practical aspects uh, come in uh, through the use of experiments in archaeology. Hi, I'm Dave Budd. I'm uh, a blacksmith based out near Dartmoor. I did the Masters in Experimental Archaeology in 2002 to 3. Since then I've been making tools primarily. Um, my main focus is making historically accurate tools that actually work rather than just museum display pieces. It's a bit of a show and tell and look around my workshop. My name's Johnny Crockett and for the last 25 years I've been teaching wilderness skills and bushcraft and survival. And my, my background interest really goes back to uh, what is in that line of work known as primitive skills. And that encouraged me to do my masters. Uh, I did my masters over two years from 2017 to 2019. And on the back of that, I was talked into doing a PhD. Actually, I wasn't talked into it, I just couldn't help myself. I just got so involved in the subject. I particularly wanted to do experimental archaeology because it fits in with what I do for a living and the two go hand in glove. Uh, I chose to do it at Exeter because of the, the experience that the staff there have and also the fact that you're not just a student at Exeter, you happen to be part of a an experimental archaeology family and that, uh, that, that can be backed up by the number of times that I'm still in touch with the people in my cohorts. From doing my, my, my masters at Exeter I found that it opened up different avenues. It's, um, it's expanded uh, an income stream, it's expanded uh, my, my friendship horizon 
and it's it's just sort of given me a completely new direction in life whilst having the support for any decision that I try to, uh, to, to follow through. So if you're looking to do a master's or a PhD in experimental archaeology, I would look no further than Exeter. Happy birthday to experimental archaeology at Exeter.